Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Dave. And on this video, we're gonna go ahead and cover what traditionally I refer to as the general resale side of the business, but I'm gonna kinda change it up a little bit. Friday's video, moving forward, is now gonna be referred to as general investments. So I'm kinda getting out of the resale thing from a sourcing and hunting and garage sailing type uh, avenue. Honestly, the time portion of it just doesn't fit my life. I don't mind the selling of it and everything that I purchased at this point, I will continue to list and sell. And maybe uh, periodically I'll give you an update on how that stuff is doing. But I feel like tailoring this video towards the investment stuff, similar to the Lego hobby, uh, in essence, is going to be uh, easier for me to maintain. And hopefully it falls more in line with the stuff that you guys are interested in seeing. So um, let me know, I guess, what you think of this particular video. And we're going to go ahead and jump into the first, very first of our general investment series by showing you all a really exciting haul. Okay, so I'm excited to share this haul with you. I've got six different boxes over here that are kind of the start of something a little bit new, a little bit old. Uh, they'll look familiar to you, but I'm going to get into these and we're going to show you some of my new pickups that I'm super stoked about. So let's go ahead and rip into these boxes. What you'll notice is that uh, I have similar things to these. But this ends up putting me into a, what I would say a different position with them. And this is going to go towards diversifying my investments. And that's what this episode is about. So you can see here that I picked up a box, a case, I guess it'd be a box, of the Prism Draft Picks Panini Football Cards. Not one but two boxes of them. You're going to see a little bit of a reoccurring theme here. Hopefully some unique stuff though as well. And, and really what I wanted to share, you've seen me open uh, some of the sports cards. You've seen me certainly purchase them and you've kind of seen that this shelf has started to become uh, filled up with them. And what I am doing is making a point to diversify my investment a little bit. Um, what I have is a super large position right now in Lego. And as I start to move some of my Lego product, what I want to do is try and um, get some investments into a few other categories so that if, let's say, for some reason, something were to happen in the Lego realm, I wouldn't be caught holding a massive position that all ends up suffering. So uh, I feel pretty good and pretty strong about the Lego hobby and about the long-term investment um, potential with it, but I've seen the sports card stuff take off as well. And so I want to start getting a little bit of my money shifted over there. We've got package two open and in package two, you can see we have some more of the prism draft picks. We've got one, two, and three of the blaster boxes this time. So that's package number two. But um, uh, where I was going with that is that uh, I want to make sure that I'm starting to kind of transition a little bit of my money. So as I get income from the sales of my Lego sets and or the sports cards that I end up selling, what I want to do is reinvest that. Right? I don't want to lose the positions uh, and the potential that I have with my money or my investment at this point. And so all the money that I'm bringing back in, I'm trying to turn back around and reinvest into it. So here you can see we've got one and two of the Prism Draft Pick Mega Boxes. So uh, that's a lot of draft pick. And this one, uh, I would say, is maybe, I'm going to say slightly more risky. And, and this is a, um, I'm going to say a little bit of inexperience on my part, uh, not realizing that, wait a minute, these draft picks, in essence, 
are the collegiate cards, which means they're the college players. Uh, again, the whole sports car realm a little bit new to me. Uh, they are still relatively hard to find in some of the form factors that I purchased them in. Uh, stores still aren't really regularly carrying them. The draft boxes, uh, the booster booster box, I'm going to call it the booster box, the 12-pack box that I got. That one I think you can pretty steadily get from Target, uh, which is where I got all of these purchases here. Okay, this one we've got something a little different at least. And so, uh, anywho, the, the point I want to cover is that I want to maintain my current position and continue to grow and expand it. And Lego sets are really good, but they take up a lot of space. So for instance, if I come over here, this is a $20 box of cards. Compare this to a $20 set, and if we could see the same increase in value, what I'm gonna be able to do is in essence get more of these on my shelves, or keep a little bit of my sanity in the process as I continue to grow my investment hold. And so uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm getting these. Uh, the second reason is that relative to storage of these items, I think you get a little bit more flexibility. So we talked a little bit about Lego sets in a previous video where uh, I have to be very cautious about where they get stored. They got to be climate controlled. You definitely can't have any moisture. And don't get me wrong, you don't want moisture around cards. But in terms of climate controlled, you can get away with a lot more on these. There's not a seal in essence, that's made of an adhesive, it's a plastic wrap. And so if these are stored in a hotter area or a non-climate controlled setting, it's not gonna damage the product. That's my stance at the moment, at least. I haven't heard about any damage or negative effects of it, which means it opens me up to other storage potentials with these, whether it be an attic, whether it be my garage, whether it be a pole barn, whether I just purchase a storage unit somewhere and use that specifically for all my sports cards, uh, it allows me to expand without as much concern over the climate or condition of the items. Let's, let's go ahead and get in this box. Here you can see we have more of the prestige set. So here we've got some of the uh, NFL prestige cards. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five of the blaster boxes. So that's a little bit different, but again, um, I have purchased these before and I did have them on the shelf. We're gonna go get ahead and get into the last one of our Target boxes and then I have one more item to share with you. But uh, I want to maintain my value, right? And so let's just say that I had, let's say $10,000 worth of Lego sets down here. And uh, as I sell those, right, the value is going to go up. And so as I sell, if I were to rebuy, that's going to continue to grow, which means uh, you can see my shelves. They are very full. There is not much room for expansion with Lego itself. And so figuring out ways where I can, you know, if I, if I were to compare this and say, well, that might be about the size of a $20 Lego set, these three boxes, this is $60 worth of invested value. And so if I can see, let's say a 50% return over a two year period on these products, maybe more than that, I don't know yet. But if I can see a 50% return, this volume, which is kind of where I'm focused a little bit on now because of storage at the moment, the volume of these sets, uh, instead of taking a $20 set to $40 and gaining $20 of margin there uh, with a 100%, maybe in a Lego set, I have the potential to take this $60 investment to $90 and make $30 of profit in the same window. And I feel like I'm, I'm hoping that I'm being a little conservative in the two year 50% increase uh, of profit on these. But that's, that's uh, I guess, kind of uh, the risk that I am taking. Uh, I don't think we're gonna see the crazy 80s junk wax era stuff happening at least right now there is some stuff changing in the sports cards realm in terms of licenses that may cause some of that to happen moving forward but at least the products that are out now i don't think are being overproduced uh considering how hard they are to get a hold of. 
Next box, we've got the Prestige Mega Boxes. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four, and five of the Mega Boxes. So I was pretty excited to get those. Uh, I think that the Prestige Mega Boxes this is the first time I've actually seen them available. And uh, it really was just kind of randomly browsing Target. And stumbled across them, had to execute, had to get them. Uh, pretty stoked about all these products. One more box. This one I'm even a little bit more excited about. I think because it puts it back into a realm of where I have some, I'm going to say expertise or knowledge. This package comes from Amazon. And uh, what we have here is the first of my Magic the Gathering investment. So this here is a booster box of the Throne of Eldraine Magic the Gathering. Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, watching of channels and kind of looking into these different sets and when they're available, when they retire. Uh, and so this particular set here is from 2019 or at least it was manufactured in 2019. Um, I feel like it was uh, towards the end of 2019, if I recall. Anyways, it's it's basically a retired product at this point. Um, and I want to start getting a little bit into that as well. I used to play Magic growing up. Loved the card game. I think it's amazing. Scott's actually been really getting into it. And so this is my next move. This is me diversifying my investments I'm going to, as I sell some of my Lego sets, I'm going to be taking and investing some of that into sports cards, into magic cards, into Pokemon cards, possibly some other trading card games. Um, I want to get a little bit of a larger position in those and not necessarily move away from Lego. But again, going back to my example, if I have $10,000 invested in Lego right now of, of my own money, $10,000... If I double that money and I get $20,000 for it, magically I sell it all at the same time, I guess. But I get $20,000, well, if I invest $20,000 back into Lego, I need twice as much room as this. And, and it keeps all that money in that one vessel. And so instead, if I take $10,000 of that money, put it back into Lego, theoretically I'm just replenishing the same product or initial investment that I had and I take the other $10,000, which was profit, and I extend into some other collectible markets, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, it's I'm diversifying. I, I don't know what else to call it. I am taking my money and I'm distributing the risk, which is kind of what it's about, across multiple different collectible types. So that if any one collectible type sees a dip in the market, uh, it's not necessarily going to hinder or impact my entire investment uh, portfolio. So that's really what I wanted to cover during this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I know that this is a little bit of a different thing, but uh, uh, this really is something that I'm excited about and interested in. I hope you're as interested as I am. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on me diversifying my investments and or if there's particular collectibles that you think are going to be in hot demand that you would recommend me looking into. So thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Bye.